the practice of Torah and how the sacrifice of the heart at the altar, the sacrifice of self as a daily practice of devotion, discipline, and obedience perfects and converts the soul as the Most High's divine alchemy. Can women teach a man? Oh, I, I, man. <laughs> oh man. I, I know you didn't ask me that question. <laughs> Not only can women teach, but if you are a person that is only learning from men, you are walking around half retarded. <laughs> what is alchemy? Alchemy is the esoteric art and chemical science of turning dross matter into pure matter, turning base metals into gold. In a spiritual sense, alchemy is the transformation of the animus or the anima to draw from Jungian psychological concepts. The animus or the anima representing the carnal beast-like nature of physical beings. This alchemy then turns the animus or anima into the sublime and wise, transcendent, spiritually mature being. Alchemy, in a spiritual sense, is the purification of mankind from the unconscious, instinct-driven, flesh-glorifying, and impulse-driven state to the divinely self-aware state of actualization. In scripture, we continually find metaphors in which we are told that we are purified in the fire of the word. By his ruach, we are purified. By the fiery sword of the word that cuts through the illusions, deceptions, and delusions of the carnal world around us, cutting through and cutting out corruption in this surgical alchemical process of trials and tribulations that purge and purify us, killing or burning away or destroying the ego as dross matter, which is burned away. And this is the true meaning of hell or Gehinom. Many do not know that Gehinom, Gehinom, which is the word used and translated as hell in many instances in scripture. Gehinom was a trash heap, for lack of a better definition, a place where trash and filth was incinerated. So this metaphor was used that hell is a place where the trash within us, the corruption, the defilement was burned away. And one will find even in the medical field, the cauterization of a wound is the burning of a wound to purify it, to remove poison from it by the high heat. Even detoxing, if we are aware of the beautiful process even of what we call sickness in the body, but which is actually a meticulous implementation of a natural detoxification response. Notice when we feel quote unquote sick, we have a fever often. Our body heat increases to burn away, purge away, and sweat out toxins from our bodies. Also keep that in mind when we go into the importance of water, as our bodies are comprised of anywhere from 70 to 80% water, and how important the waters of life, the waters of the body are to actually delineate a living being from a dead corpse, the dust of the ground. Thus hell, our experiences of trauma, trials, and tribulations are indeed meant to refine us like gold in the refiner's fire 
we are not punished by the Most High who does not delight in our sorrow and suffering. However, it is through trials and tribulations catalyzed by, brought about by our deviation from the path of righteousness that we are purified through struggle just as pressure creates diamonds and fire purifies gold. What is valuable and precious in us, in our soul, is revealed when the filth is, is purified and burned away. This is the meaning of hell. Hell is a state of separation, a state of corruption, a state of purification through those fires of intensity, of trial, that then purifies us. So perhaps, too, we may find, and this may be a bit controversial, we may find that perhaps for some, hell is not eternal. Perhaps for some, hell is not even an afterlife. Perhaps some of us experience a hell on earth through which we are purified and then granted the gift of eternal life. Because through that fire, what remains, our pure soul, is found precious and valuable to the Most High as gold. And that is what he keeps and that is what remains eternally. The process of alchemy, as you'll see here, has several stages. These stages also correspond to different points of the soul's development. And alchemy, the process of alchemy is a scientific chemical processing that involves many different elements and minerals, all of which, interestingly enough, are within the human body. This creation of the consummate scientist and alchemist himself, the most high. Notice how Eve does not fall under the authority of Adam until after the sin, which mm. obviously then means prior to the sin, it was even Stephen. That's right. Or else how could the Bible say that she is now under her husband if this was the design from the beginning? So mm -hmm. the design that the creator saw from the beginning was that the two were even Stephen, intellectually speaking and spiritually speaking. The two, Moray, were truly one. You cannot truly be one if he is the only intellectual. You cannot truly be one if he is the real spiritual one. But you can truly be said to be one when you are both intellectual. You can truly be said to be one when you are both spiritual. I want us to notice something. The first woman the Bible talks about, I don't know what the people out here are saying. I heard the name Eve. The Bible says her name is Chawa. In the Bible, it says she is the mother of all living. So when you ask Moray, the average Hebrew, what is the meaning of Eve's name, Moray? You know what they will say to you, Moray? They'll say Eve means the mother of all living. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you this, Moray, that is only partially true. I'll tell mm. you why. The word for life in Hebrew is chaya. Chaya. That's how you say life. Or you can say 
Chai, which is spelled in Hebrew, Chet and Yod. Chai. If you want to say living in Hebrew, it's Chaya. And that's spelled Chet, Yod, Hey. I want you to notice something, Moray. When you open the text, Eve's name is not spelled Chet, Yod, Hey. E's name is spelled Chet, Wav, Hey. Mm. The Bible doesn't call Eve Chaya, which is living. Mm -hmm. The Bible calls her Chawa with a W, which means to speak life. Open up Psalms chapter 19. Look at verses two through three. Day unto day speaks. Matter of fact, let me read it. Because <laughs> one thing I'm big on is not butchering the text by missing a single word. I want this to be perfect. Psalms 19, verse 2 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament tells of his handiwork. Day after day utter speech, and night after night declares knowledge. Well, Moray, the word for declares, as in declares knowledge, in Psalms 19 and 3, that's the word Yehaweh. Yehaweh, spelled in Hebrew, Yod, Chet, Wav, He. The root, however, is Chawa, Eve's name. The word used in Psalms 19.3 for declares knowledge is Chawa. That's Eve's name. How could we even imagine that women can't teach? when the name that God gives the first woman is to declare knowledge. Hello! 